Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, so I have an incredible treat for you today. I interviewed Mason Adams. He is a counselor and a poet, and he just came out with a new book called Bless. B L E S S bless. It's available on amazon.com and in the next segment of the show you're going to hear this interview. The themes of the show ended up being the sun, nature and God being mindful in everyday mundane practices. And it was just enlightening and incredible. I am so blessed to have, well, been found by Mason. He found me online and started listening to the show and asked if it was possible to read a couple poems for us. So I feel really grateful for that. And what an amazing first interview for Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast, <laughs> the third version of the show. So as I'm saying this, my uh, left ear has gone deaf with downloads, Ugh, the ascension. I had an amazing and incredible thing happen this morning that comes out in the interview uh, with the sun. So tomorrow... The show is going to be about the conversation I had <laughs> with the sun and some meditative techniques that, uh, well, the sun taught me and told me to tell you guys. And I noticed that the farther and deeper we get into uh, the ascension, the awakening of all humanity, the rising up into the fifth dimension, the crazier we all sound. <laughs> but at the same time, it's such an incredible and fun journey and it's just getting better and better. It really, really is. So tomorrow is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to do a little bit more meditation for the rest of the day. Um, as I'm getting this uh, done early, way early. And by the way, I apologize for getting the show out. I was about an hour late getting the show on the air yesterday because of uh, te technical difficulties. My computer was not connected to the internet for half the day. It just kept, like, I would have 10 minutes and then it would just not be connected. And then when it was it was just, it was a whole thing. It was, it was boring, but it was, it took forever. And, but I hope you enjoyed the St. Francis episode anyway, even though I was an hour late with it coming out. I think it was worth the wait. Okay, good. Now the tinnitus is going, it's passing. Whew, I can actually hear again. I'm like snapping in front of my ear. Like, <laughs> and that's another thing I, I wanted to bring up. Um, before we get to the section, second section of, uh, of the show, uh, on the Ascension journals this morning, Amber White was talking about how to get rid of energy immediately in front of you, you know, or near you when it's not yours to own, when people are shoving their stuff on you, uh, you could snap or, you, or clap over your head or in front of you. And that brings about a mindfulness to snap your mind from thinking, you know, snap your mind out of it for literally snap your mind out of it. I just got that. <laughs> but to snap yourself out of it, clap yourself out of it, so that your mind doesn't get stuck on it. And at the same time, you're immediately clearing the energy. It's something that just came to her while meditating. And it's, I agree. I think this is 
this is great. I actually started doing it this morning. So about the same time she was getting the information, I was also getting the same. I love how people start to be on same same wavelengths with this uh, this uh, awakening process. So uh, something that Mason taught me or reminded me of is that we should do everything in our waking life with mindfulness and then everything becomes a spiritual experience as I'm looking about my house and I realize I need to sweep and there's a little bit of dusting that can go on and should go on (laughs) I'm going to keep this in mind and I'm going to be mindfully cleaning my house for the rest of the afternoon And hopefully in a couple hours, I will be mindfully drinking a beer. (laughs) My body was craving a beer. (laughs) We're going to be hit with a lot of new plasma waves coming our way. The vibe is going to be really, 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 really high. So if you guys are experiencing changes or you feel like suddenly you want to sleep out of nowhere or changes like, you know, you suddenly are having problems with your eyesight or your hearing. It's temporary. Don't panic. The only way to get through it is literally to go through it. And if you have acceptance in your heart and love, it makes it so much easier. I have noticed this myself when I start to panic, like, wait, I can't handle this energy. It's too much. It's too much. Like, really? No more, no more. And then I heard a voice this morning say, breathe, just breathe. You'll get through it if you accept it. Ah, I accepted it and I feel much better. (laughs) And another funny thing that happened was when I was getting ready to um, do the interview with Mason and we're trying to connect on the anchor platform, all of a sudden I got overtaken by this horrible allergy attack. I mean, I was coughing, I was sneezing, my throat, you could kind of maybe tell it, my throat's a little swollen still, but... I remembered uh, the Rife episode I did about Rife frequencies, so I put it on for allergies, I laid down, I set my alarm so that when that was over I had 10 minutes to sleep, and 10 minutes was all I needed, and then I woke up and I did an anti-fatigue Rife frequency set, and I felt better enough for like a whole hour to do it, to do the to do the interview. So. Really, if you haven't downloaded the Z app yet, Z app Rife uh, frequency generator, please do it. I mean, seriously, do yourself a favor. Uh, yeah, the tones are annoying, but you get used to it. <laughs> Especially if it's healing other parts and other things uh, that you need done. I mean, it's in the past that kind of an allergy allergy attack. I would have said, oh. You know, let's just do tomorrow because I can't do it. Uh, You know, because it I mean, it came on so sudden and so strong. But after like not even 30 minutes, like maybe 15 minutes with this app generator and zap generator. And it was just, all right, well, the allergies are done. I feel better. I actually felt better. So I feel and I see that this is going to absolutely change my life. And so today we're grateful to Royal Rife. (laughs) So this is a long one. I suggest you bundle up if you're cold, grab your hot chocolate or your coffee, whatever your style is, but grab a blanket and cuddle up. This is an enjoyable one. I, I must say, I... I'm absolutely pleased as punch that it turned out as wonderful as it did. 
and it, it's only because of Mason. So Mason Adams, I am really grateful to you. Thank you for being on my show. I'm really happy that you reached out to me. And if any of you want to reach out to me for any reason at all, you may send me a message at <clears throat> anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical, or you can also write me at Twitter at mermaid girl 888. Also Instagram the same. And I haven't quite gotten into the Tumblr yet, but that will be metaphysical mermaid if you uh, are so inclined. I prefer the anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical because, as you know, I'm on the app every single day. And it helps me to know that I will see your message immediately and I can respond in kind. So, without further ado... After these messages, or message as the case may be, (laughs) depending on when you're listening to this, we're going to come back after this with Mason Adams. Hey you! Have you ever thought about having your own podcast like me? Was it even a New Year's resolution? For me, it sure was. But as I've been looking into this for months, I was daunted. There's so many questions I had. When I was trying to get this off the ground, I was wondering, how do I record the episode? How do I get it across all the platforms? How do I get my podcast on Apple podcasts when I don't even have an iPhone. How do I get it onto Spotify and all the other places? How do I get people to listen? And how do I make money from my podcast? How do I edit it? Oh my God. I I had all these questions and I was so confused until I discovered the simple, simple answer is anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free, and it is ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors, too, so you can get paid to podcast. All you need to do is record it. You don't have to go out and look for people to advertise on your show they help you so basically what I like about podcasting is I don't have to have a video of myself you don't know if my hair is dirty or if I'm still in my pajamas or even if I'm wearing makeup (laughs) haha and it's so easy I could do this from the comfort of my own home in my living room using this amazing app right from my cell phone so easy right so if you've always wanted to start your own podcast and make money by the way doing it please go to anchor.fm forward slash start That is anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters that are already using Anchor. Again, that's anchor.fm forward slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast and I can't wait to favorite you. Woohoo! Let's be bro- let's be broadcast podcast buddies. <laughs> I'll see you there. Hi, Elena. Hey, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really neat, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it already started recording, so we did oh, great. it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I guess I'll just start with the show part of this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, wherever is yeah. wherever is where you start. I was listening yeah, exactly. to some of your shows and I liked it. So great, that to, is great to just really- riff and go into it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This is okay. Well, guys, uh, this is Mason Adams. He is a metaphysical poet, and we're going to be lucky enough to hear some of his poetry today. Is that well, right? Definitely, definitely. If uh, if that if that's what you'd like to hear, I uh, I like that introduction. I think uh, metaphysical is a very interesting word that you don't get to hear too much of these days, unfortunately. Right, exactly. It's it's a very almost an antique word. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's right. So, so maybe where are you from? Because we this is our very first conversation ever. Yeah. So, where are you from? Well, I'm from Rhode Island, which is in New England, the smallest state. So, if you don't know about Yay. it, that's why. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I know. I, I've never been there, but I do. I have heard of it. Well, it's about <laughs> that's very five cool. degrees right now. <laughs> it is utterly freezing. It's it's what? It's about five degrees right now. Oh, <laughs> at least it feels like it. Oh my god. Oh yeah. So we are enjoying oh, a little bit god. of sunlight these past couple of days. Other than that, it's been like hibernating inside of a cave all winter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's it's the time to be bears. <laughs> well, I guess there's a there's a time for everything. That's so awesome. So, uh, well, tell me more about your your poetry. How did you come to uh, write spiritual poetry? Well, that that's a that's a really good question because I find years 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 of writing I still ask myself that question and the answer isn't isn't really clear i try to trace it back to its roots and it 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 seems to uh it seems to evade me a little bit um there are little clues uh when i look into my past and i think about the different things that i've done and and perhaps the way i was raised and brought up um I, w- I grew up with a love of literature. I read fantasy, um, and you know, I I actually didn't pay too much to writing in in uh, growing up in grade school. But uh, my parents will say that I was very creative when I when I got into uh, certain creative writing classes and and doing essays on different topics. Um, yeah, so kind of an indirect beginning, you know, just living life, doing a bunch of different things, and um, one thing really led to another, actually. I got a job, and I was working as a lifeguard, and uh, this is usually the point where uh, in past uh, uh, podcasts, uh, someone will say, okay, so you're a lifeguard, and then you started writing poetry. I don't get it. <laughs> so... <but. laughs> <All right. laughs> I had a lot of free time and uh, in between um, swims and we were allowed to read and I started reading different things like Rumi and Stuart Wilde and you know so so getting into the metaphysical aspect of it um, and then one day I just started writing I just liked I liked I liked what writing did you know writing was really really magic in the way that you know, simple things on a piece of paper can elicit such a uh, complex illustration in our minds and convey so many different thoughts and feelings. So I think it was times when I had uh, a lot of downtime that I, you know, discovered my love for poetry and writing. Oh, that's incredible. That is incredible. Maybe you were inspired by the nature around you. A little bit, you know, the ocean is beautiful. Mm. Mm, definitely, definitely. I think the way that you know sometimes the sun hits a, a landscape, or you know the wind blows. It's it's there are moments that you can get lost in. Um, 
And I think poets are people who get lost in those moments and then write about them. I, I think that's true. I, I had a friend at, who came to visit me up in the forest. Actually, I used to live in Paradise, California, which, well, just burned off the map a couple months ago. <laughs> yeah, you guys had, and, it, had it rough out there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I live in Ecuador, so thank God I wasn't, you know, anywhere near it at the time, you know, and I've, I've been praying for everyone in paradise, but I had a friend that came to visit me up there years and years ago, and it was in the afternoon about 3.30 or 4, and the sun was just starting to go down, and he got in inexplicably sad and he said i don't know why but at this time every day if i'm outside and the sun catches me in the eyes i feel so sad like i'm longing for something that i can't explain and he just started crying and, and like the tears were flowing wow. and he said, he said there's like an emotion conveyed by the sun to me in this moment that's well, really and beautiful yeah, it was really beautiful. I think he has the heart of a poet too. Mm, and I think um, so too. <laughs> <laughs> like Maybe usually he wants I, to write I don't something. Think of, Right, exactly, exactly. Like usually I don't think of, you know, oh the sun's just something, but I feel lately, especially lately, that the sun besides just being a powerful ball of light that grows our plants and gives us vitamin D when we're out in it. I, I feel like um, there's something more to it. There's a higher vibrate vibration or something to, I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely. just, it's, it's more magical than just a ball of light that keeps us warm in the daytime. You know what I yeah, mean? And gives us a nice tan. There's different. Right. Well, <laughs> there's 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 more to it than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something speak you for just yourself. Have to... <laughs> <laughs> nice town. I don't know. Speak for yourself because I've lived in South America for three years. I swear the sun bleaches me out like old dried bones. I am whiter wow. than ever. <laughs> I don't know. It has the opposite effect on me. <laughs> well, we all we all have different backgrounds, and I guess they're you know we're more sensitive to the sun than others. But you know, I was someone right. who, who always who always noticed um, having a seasonal effect of. Sure, sure. Oh, I'm losing you there a bit, Mason. Hopefully, uh, it's still... Is it still recording? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. That was strange. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, I think I, I might have pulled on my headphone a little bit. Oops. Okay. Well, like All I right. was saying, um, you know, I think uh, I think people don't tend to uh, to notice how powerful those little moments are. And um, if they come to a, a point in their lives where they, you know, start to recognize these things, I think that can be a very, you know, powerful and, and profound moment for them. Um, I myself remember reading, uh, and it was, I think it was in um, uh, Silent Power by um, Don Juan, and his mentor uh, was with him, and they were traveling through I believe it was you know the Arizona desert landscape and they came across this area where they could see the sun and I, I believe it was in uh, the noontime very powerful and the individual felt a, a great affinity towards the uh, the sun in that position um, I've known mm. My, mm, I've known myself to really quite enjoy the sun when Actually, it's in the position that your friend had mentioned. So for me, I find that to be a very uh, powerful place for me. I find that to be a, a power uh, spot for me when the sun is uh, just about going down two thirds on its way. And uh, I feel like I'm most receptive. It's not too, 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 too bright. Um, but, you know, it's it's still there and it's enough to, you know, face face head on and really 
take it in. I, re- I remember actually uh, growing up something that I read uh, in um, Taoism saying that the two most powerful times to meditate was when the sun was first rising and then when the sun was setting because the sun at that time it's the easiest for us to our bodies and you know our minds and our psyches to really and our spirits to really take in wow so I, that's I, that's powerful well you know it's like uh it's like we were saying you know just recognizing these moments can can be uh, like poetry so i think that's interesting what's going on with your friend maybe maybe that's not his his uh his uh, place of power really maybe he's stronger when the when the sun is somewhere earlier in the day wow that's such an interesting observation such a that's a really cool thing that people can start to experiment with, I think. Yeah, perhaps it is. What yeah. is their position of power? Mm. Why we just discovered something cool. <laughs> 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 or hot, you know, it is the sun. <laughs> One of those. It's something. It's interesting. Yeah, that that thing, that same friend had called me um a few weeks later. And he's and he said to me the funniest thing. He said, you know, he said, I've I've tried to been overcome a lot of my fears lately. And I said, Oh, really? And he said, Yeah, in fact, I uh I just recently overcame my fear of staring directly at the sun. <laughs> Hopefully not by staring at the sun. <laughs> Oh, yeah, literally, he said, I'm going to stare at the sun. I think they've been lying to us. <laughs> oh, well, there's one way to find out, but <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I would take their word for it. <laughs> now, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> but I yeah, do not recommend. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's another reason why I like the sun in that, in that spot. Um, because, you know, you can, you know, not, of course, not directly stare at it but you know you can get a good two-thirds of the view and it's uh it's really nice it's actually the the view i have from my office right now and it's lovely so maybe maybe that's some advice that you could pass along to him yeah for sure i'll probably just forward this episode to him (laughs) i'm sure he will love it hey there (laughs) Yeah, well, that's cool. That, I'm, really, that I'm, is- I'm, I'm really glad that we were able to uh, do this podcast. It's a, it's an interesting format. You know, it's kind of just like a conversation. Yeah, I'm really liking it too. I think this is great. So, if you don't mind my asking, what is it that you do for a living? You said your office. Now I'm curious. Oh well, I'm at my, I'm at my, uh, the office at my house right now. It's just the spare okay, bedroom okay. that. Um, it's just a spare bedroom that my girlfriend and I converted into the home office, you know, a little library area. Oh, that's every writer needs that for sure. <laughs> yeah. She calls it my man cave, but I really need it to, <laughs> I really need it to unwind and, and focus on, you know, doing things creative. Oh yeah, I agree. I, I am. Um, I just recently, I purchased a raw wood desk and a chair down at the um, the Rotario Market, which is it, it's people come from a place called Otavalo here, which is a four thousand year old uh, trading place in Ecuador. Wow. It's ancient, and um, these people have been doing this for a long time through generations. But I bought this raw wood desk and I painted it very. Um, artsy, kind of Soho funky, and <laughs> I am writing. I'm putting writing like quotes on it, huh. and that's like my little tiny section of my room that's like my sacred writing space because I'm a writer also, hmm. and um, it's so nice. It's like I I just I get so happy and I wake up, I see my desk, and I'm like, yay! I can't wait. Oh, you that's know, fantastic. To get to it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's important yeah. for for us to create these um, sacred spaces, you know, places where we can really enter into 
uh, you know, the higher states of creativity and awareness um, and even meditation. I think it's it's just really appropriate to carve out those spaces for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't say it better myself for sure. You're you really are a poet. I could tell. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, it helps. Okay. You know, well, it helps to <laughs> notice these things. That's all. For sure. For sure. Well, okay. Having said this, I really want to hear your poetry now. Um, I'm going to ask you to pick what you wish to read. Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> Maybe ask Spirit. Spirit will be your guide. Hmm. I'm going to read a poem called Mother of the Earth. Okay. Can you say the title one more time? I think I might not have heard that. Okay. Uh, this is a poem. This is a poem called Mother of the Earth. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Sing to me, O Mother Earth, your voice so lovely. Sing until your heart is content. It lulls my body to sleep so my mind may stir. It fulfills my mind's thirst so my heart may soar. Sing to me, O Mother Earth, your voice so lovely. I am ready to listen. Woo! <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, I want more. I think we have to hear more. <laughs> there, there are little bits of uh, emotional roller coasters for me because I, I really go back to when I wrote them. And I'm looking at yeah, it with I can Betty's it. artwork. Sure, sure. Always takes me to a place. Right, right. Yeah, whatever you were feeling at the time, it's almost like when you mm. are in a space and you smell a certain smell and something happens, and every time you smell that smell, it brings that memory to you again. Mm. So it becomes a visceral part of you that you get to share with us. Well, it's, it's very fun to share it, so thank you for having me on your show. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you here. You have no idea. This is so awesome. <laughs> once I once I realized it was just like a conversation, I was like, I'm, I don't really know how these things work. And then all of a sudden I was like, just have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all it is. That's all I want to do is just start the dialogue. You know, I've been talking for 30 days on my own. Just, you know, that was my goal to see if I could you know, the test of time because Mm. so many metaphysical or spiritual podcasts out there, you know, they'll start off doing one a week and then after about three or four months, they kind of die off. And Mm. so there's only like 10 or 20 episodes and that's, you know, three years ago they ended and it's, and Mm. I'm like, well, I'm challenging myself, you know, if there's enough spiritual stuff out there that I could keep it going for 30 days and I have a list of 30 things more I want to do still. Oh, that's awesome. But that's I, really good to hear. I was yeah. listening to your most recent podcast on St. Francis of Assisi, and I thought oh, that was very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I thought that was so interesting. interesting. I think it's nice that people are still wanting to talk about those kinds of things. You know, it's kind of like, not not so much like the new age wave has like fizzled out, but, you know, certainly not music and art but it's like people to really hold the banner or the the torch and and do podcasts you know that's like the only way that this kind of culture is going to be you know kept alive so it's awesome right 
Right. This is our modern day history books. I I even told my youngest son um, about a week ago. I said, you know, I feel like if I'm recording my stories and all the strange things that happen, like things that like that, my I have like two Sasquatch stories, but or three Sasquatch three, and I did on my Sasquatch episode, but I don't really have enough material to write a whole book about it. And mm. so this is almost like. Every episode is like a mini book or a chapter from my life, so that one day my grandchildren will know their grandma, you know, or my great grandma, you know, my great grandchildren someday. Because I don't have a grandchild yet. My kids are pretty, you know, they're teenagers still. So, you know,、mm. um, it's like a living library. You know, it's like the Akashic Records out loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I like I like that way of putting it. Definitely. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Yeah, I'm half someone. I didn't hear that. It was breaking up a little. Now that we're talking over each other. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that I'm I'm happy that、um, I have someone else on the show. This is fun. I'm gonna try to do more interviews in the future. So I'm glad that this is this is our our experiment. Oh, and by the way, it's our fourth <laughs> show.、Nice. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad so, to be on for number four zero, and I hope that you continue it and and have yeah, ideas there it is. Mouth and, to、uh, God's maybe... ears.、Hey. Oh, see now you're breaking up a little bit too. So go say it again, please. Oh, okay. No, I I hope that you have a, a lot of success in the future and and keep these going, even if you know. Even when it gets hard, you know, I I certainly, you know, have、uh, you know not had a, well, I've had a, a standard, I guess you could say, artistic experience. It took me,、um, it took me, I think, two solid years、um, before I、wow. had any like resemblance of a breakthrough. And then even then, it was it's still been like the, you know, thousand mile journey. <laughs> Like constantly, constantly repeating itself.、Um, it's it's you know difficult at times, and I think it's important for you know all artistic people to to really find find ways to hunker down and and you know once you've had that vision of of what you of what you see your life being like and what you see yourself doing, it's really important to just keep holding steady.、Um, You know, it regard and it, it's like it's it doesn't get any easier. It, it doesn't, doesn't、um, easier. It doesn't become any less necessary any once less necessary. you have some successes. Yeah, some successes. That's something that I certainly、yeah. learned along the way. That's awesome. That's great advice. I think anyone listening will will get a lot from that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, we're we're here to hear poetry. So. Oh, I've stalled long enough, have I? <laughs> <laughs> this、uh. this one's a poem called "Creating a Novelty." Okay. As my sight of this world fades, I open up. I rise to the beauty and the glory of our true identity, transient as passing clouds, persistent as crashing waves, everlasting as I am. <laughs> Ooh, I love it! I love it. I could see the ocean. You see, this is what you did when you were a lifeguard. That makes so much sense now, doesn't it? <laughs> Very, I think I, I think I actually, I think I actually wrote that one on the porch, and I was.、Um, it was a summer day, and the sun was shining, and I had my. Feet kicked up, and I was laying on the outdoor recliner, and I was just soaking in the 
the summer energy and I just started to see things differently. And yeah, I think there's information in the sun. I, I've heard that in mm. each individual packet of light, there's bits and pieces of information. And there's people that say now that the sun is coding or encoding our DNA, and that's how we evolve. Yep, I've heard that as well. It's pretty, pretty astonishing stuff. It's pretty astonishing stuff. I certainly Ooh. take it to be true. I take it to be true. I, I do too. Mm. <clears throat> I do. Too. I've had some incredible. This morning, I had a, a, a well. I, I guess you could call it a meditation, but I decided I'm going to look at the sun today, right when it's coming up. You know, so I, I want to see what all the fuss is about, and hopefully, I won't go blind. Seconds, <laughs> 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 and then I shut my eyes. It's kind of a standing meditation, and I asked the sun to send me what it would, you know, what it will, mm-hmm. and I just was receptive and. I felt like it was talking to me. I'm going to, I'm going to in a little bit record the beginning part of the show, which is fun. We get to do sections and then rearrange them Oh, cool! with anchors. Yeah. It's kind of a fun, I like it. I like it. But, um, I had this overwhelming energy throughout my whole body. My bones started to vibrate really intensely. I thought I was going to either, pass out or, or take off off the ground <laughs> sounds nice <laughs> yeah it was it was incredible and I just I, I felt so filled with life and happiness and this joy of just being and it was nice I, I, I laid down and, and slept for a couple hours after that but one thing that was really weird because it's the sun you think that it would affect my eyes but my ears were ringing so loud that I almost was partially deaf for like two hours afterwards I'm like how is the sun so loud wow <laughs> yeah That's it was really that profound <laughs> mm. yeah. it sounds like your, wow. your DNA was being activated Right. Yeah, I'm activated. I don't know. In, I'm going to try and do this again tomorrow morning when the sun comes up. Hey, I would. I would. Going, if that's if that's from the here, response but, that I got, I would be doing that too. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, I want to keep going, keep going, keep going. It's so interesting. Huh. You know, like there's so many mysteries to unravel in this world. It's just. Right when you think you have it all figured out, a whole new set of mysteries. Pres- mm. That's kind of like how I get to a, a, a certain point where I think I'll never write <laughs> another poem again. Like I've written too many, not too many, but I've written so many and I can't possibly see inspiration striking me ever again. And, you know, three or four poems will come out. Oh, that's incredible. And okay. I kind of think that we have to, um, I kind of get the feeling that we have to empty ourselves of anything really before we're able to receive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. I think it's time. We need another More time. one. Okay. This one is called I Have No Name. I have no name, yet you know who I am. You cannot see me, yet you know where I stand. You think what you know, but know not what you think. The faces you see are gone in a blink. The drum beats loudly. The heartbeat is clear. I have no name, yet you know I am near. I am you. You are me. Hmm. 
and that's all there is to that one. Ooh, is it possible to have warm chills? I have warm chills right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they might call that the wills. I don't know. That that sounds kind of catchy. I like that. I like the warm chills. <laughs> Maybe that's the short charms. Woo! I don't know. I don't know what they are, but I want them. This <laughs> <laughs> is so. Sad. All right. I'll read. I'll read another one. Yeah. Um, this one's called the tears yeah. of prayer. <laughs> the tears of prayer. The tears of prayer come falling down faster than I can count. This blessed rain. Wash away all my fears and doubts. I can hear the songbirds singing deep within my heart. Their melody carries me to a place where I can start. The tears of prayer. For me, that's almost what it what it's like when I uh, when I um, when I hear a poem. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That that reminds me of when um, I was first starting to meditate, and I wanted to hear the voice of God within me, and. I couldn't sit still and I was just like fidgeting all the time and you know I, I just started with five minutes a day and then I I went up to 10 and then 15 and eventually I was up to four and a half hours it took a while. Mm, that's amazing <laughs> and then I, and even then I was even as a four and a half hours every day I was still not hearing the voice of God clearly and I wasn't and I wanted to know, and I just remember just bawling my head off one night, just <laughs> crying and crying, like, let me know you, let me see you. You know, it's so, it's so intense. I think the meaning wrote a song about that, or like that was one of the words in their song, like, let me know you. And it was just, <laughs> um, you know, Lord, let me see you. I really want to see you, you know? And it's like that. <laughs> frustrating when you're meditating and so hard and you're doing the work you're putting in the hours and mm. nothing is happening and it's just the tears of prayer you know oh yeah <laughs> mm. oh yeah it's <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> you, you know you um you reminded me of a short poem and it, it says that reverence is a feeling a perception it feels like crying with God while bathing in the sun. And I think that's the perception that you just described. Um, I could, I, I meditated once before that the longest it went was three to three and a half hours. So I could only imagine what it's like to be in that space multiple times day after day it sounds so relaxing and I think that if people can touch or tap into even five minutes or five percent of that I think that the world would be a very more loving and aware place yeah I agree I agree for sure. Um, I will say, though, when you are living your life and you're going about your time, it's the best time to do it is when you're single or when you haven't had children yet. <laughs> because when my it kids makes sense. came along, 
it just I didn't have four hours a day anymore. Mm. I was lucky that I, that a lot of this, um, a lot of my um, initiation into all of this happened a lot earlier, and I met my significant other uh, just when I was ending out of that phase, and um, you know. It's not to say that I don't go down rabbit holes because I do. I go down rabbit holes all the, all the time. You know, whatever you know, whatever we're talking about. You know, it could be any topic. But um, you know, I I really get what you're saying because there's like a certain kind of wildness, like a you know, not sleeping until you know, going to bed until six o'clock in the morning because you've been up all night. You know, reading metaphysics or you know something like that which is understandably very difficult if you have a romantic partner in your life or like you mentioned having children um so that's that's really um part of the reason why um Benny and I put together this book was because we wanted something for people to get joy and inspiration from and even if it's only a painting or a poem a day if it's all you can manage to explore those realms of mind and soul then i think anything that you do is is really really worthwhile yeah i i agree i think any any creative endeavor i mean you don't have to sit and stare at your third eye. I mean, you can paint or sing or, you know, play a song on, you know, mm. on a piano or dance or anything. I mean, any little thing that is done in reference for the divine or in order to understand yourself better and honoring and respecting your soul, I think that is a form of meditation also. Mm. Definitely. Definitely. Are we at that time where I'm going to read another poem? Yes, please, please <laughs> let it. Be. Let's see. This is a short one. Catch your breath. It is running fast. Close your eyes. Make this last. Quiet your voice. Find your space. Realize life is not a race. That seemed relevant to what we were talking about. Right. I want to hear it again because part okay. of it is. But I want to. I'm closing my eyes so I can fully. Okay. Catch your breath. It is running fast. Close your eyes. Make this last. Quiet your voice. Find your space. Realize life is not a race. Wow, oh, you know, it, it seems like you've studied mindfulness. I think so. Maybe not in any formal way, but I've formal way, always but sure. loved reading about it and putting it into practice as much as I can. You know, it's, it's that is. Hmm. It's it's something that Ooh, I, I think I attempt to do every day. I'm not always successful but you know when I am you know occasionally I'll, I'll write about it and more often than not I'll just listen my job right now my day job is as a uh, counselor a psychological counselor and I, sp I spend a lot of my day listening because yeah, ninety percent of the counseling is is listening, really. Um, so I feel like that helps 
uh, cultivate any any kind of mindfulness that I that I get. But you know, I live a very busy life in in between, and you know, things are. You know, as as you know, as as a creative person, you often find yourself between two extremes. So, it's always a balancing act. Every everything is. I feel like I'm on a, a spiritual tightrope, walking skyscrapers. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it the razor's edge, right? That's right. Exactly exactly you know like I I have a degree in psychology and I was a counselor as well for a while and yeah I actually have a degree in human sexuality so I worked for um, gay and lesbian adolescent social services in Los Angeles so it was very very interesting I worked in a dangerous neighborhood there was gang all around and I had to keep the kids off drugs, out of gangs and counsel them about, and I thought the biggest issue was helping them see that they're okay because, you know, if they're gay or lesbian or bisexual, there's nothing wrong with that. They should be who God made them and who they want to be and who they were born to be. And Mm -hmm. no one had an issue with it, so I was happy that they were all completely well adjusted Mm -hmm. and accepted themselves but their other issues were just trying to stay in school and they really wanted to drop out and smoke weed and run away Mm -hmm. you know know, like I had uh, one friend he just wanted let alone someone undergoing a you know confusing personal transformation or you know it sounds like you had your work cut out for you yeah, it was fun though. Honestly, I loved it. I loved it. I had one kid who had um, HIV, and I had to give him his medicine. And every day, I would give him his medicine and give him words of encouragement and tell him to go brush his teeth and put him, you know, put him to bed. So I always did the night, the evening, and night shift. And and then I would go outside and cry. I would just—it was breaking my heart. He was 12 years old and born with HIV. You know, like what kind of a life. Mm. You know, and it was just like, Tough woo, to come, you come know, to and it was just, it got, I mean, yeah, I, I'm an empath and I feel what people feel on the inside of me. I feel their hearts inside mm-hmm. me beating inside of me sometimes. And I, I, I opened my heart so much to these kids that I was like constantly like overwhelmed, you know, mm-hmm. but it, it, so the job itself only lasted about a year. But I, I promised myself I would give one year of my life to uh, making hardly money, any money at all in a really dangerous neighborhood just to make a difference, you know, from my little tiny, you know, whatever difference I can make. I don't know if I did or not. Absolutely. An impact or Absolutely. Not, but just by being there, you make, a, you make a difference and you make an impact. And then on top of that. Right. It's kind of my... Your ability to, to feel is such a, a benefit to those around you. So you absolutely made an impact. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, I it was kind of a deal I made with God, you know, get me through my my years of school, get me through this degree, mm. you know, a lot of support from my, from my grandma, but, you know, it helped me financially, but overall, I feel like I kind of did on my own you know I'm sorry I didn't get that last part it just broke up what did you say sorry about that I, I said that I, I I did it mostly on my own you know day in and day out I was alone mm-hmm. and I'm self-propelled you know, towards ambition mm-hmm. but um but I but I did have a lot of support from my mom and my grandmother a little bit of financial support mm-hmm. and emotional support made things easier but so you could it was really just, focus on you know your personal transformation which almost you know wasn't about the difficulties that you're going through you know when you experience life on such a inner level everything is meaningful and that can be extremely draining i get it yeah I, i've lived most of my yeah. life as, like that as well so it's interesting to hear you say that because I, I i resonate a lot with what you're saying 
you know. Yeah, everything seems to be a balance, though. You know, like you know, gain your gain a degree, and you're going to school, and you're you're trying to make a life for yourself. You're trying to do it, but at the same time, you want to either party or、mm. be in a romantic relationship, or you know, and then you got your balance with your family, and then also the spiritual life is going on、mm. the whole time. You know, the, the awakenings and the initiations come whether you're busy or、mm. not. You know. Yeah, I I read something really <laughs> profound in the Hua Hu Ching, which is a companion book to the Tao Te Ching, and it says that no form of enlightenment can be maintained if there isn't balance between physical, mental, spiritual. Yes, yes, I agree with that. It's a tightrope、mm. walk. That's the way I look at it. It's like three full-time jobs <laughs> on top of everything else. But it, <laughs> you know, it prepares us for the ultimate challenges. You know, my good friend says that we're living in a time of of tests. We're being tested on many different levels,、um, spiritually,、um, on the deepest level. And you know the work that we do now is going to pay off, I'm sure, in you know magnitudes and ways that we just can't even comprehend right now.、Um, you know, you you really change someone when you walk past them in the grocery market, you know, or in the park, or when you're waiting in line at the bank. You know, your silent thoughts and feelings. Influence those around you in in unspoken ways. That's so funny you say that because that's like every time I leave the house, I'm always like, okay, God protects the stray dogs, make sure they don't get hit by a car and they stay safe. And I see you know, them walking down the street. If I see an old lady, you know, with her, you know, groceries or something, I'm always. If I can't help, I'm always just okay. God bless、mm. her, or I, it's like constantly, I'm constantly living a, a, a meditative sort of prayer. Like it's every time I leave the house, it's exhausting because I'm <laughs> I'm trying to manage my own energy, I transmute the energy of people around、mm. me, and at the same time I'm praying constantly. And then I'm also trying to remember why I left the house、mm. in the first place. <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, a cup of coffee might help with that. That's usually my morning ritual. I can't, I can't really speak or think. I have a very strong cup of espresso or coffee or something to get me up. I'm up before the sun rises, so it's very, <laughs> you know, you know, you're you're the motivating factor of why you need to get up and you need to get up and do it. And,、um, I like it, you know. It's 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 an adventure, you know. It's you know every day having, you know, responsibilities and things that I have to accomplish, and then on top of that, things that you know no one is going to make happen besides myself, and it's going to take a hundred times more energy than the universe is putting into the situation in order for it to come to. Birth to fruition, so you know there's that, and then it's like you know what today I just want to put in, put on a good pair of wool socks and just not go outside and <laughs> stay inside away from the five degree weather.、Um, it's you know, but、oh. you know it's just a, it's a little different、uh, in the seasons over here,、um, you know. But it's you know the challenge is the same. The challenge is absolutely the same. For me, I noticed at a young age I started creating sanctuaries around me. I, you know, I didn't know that's what I was doing at the time, but it's what I was doing. You know, if I had a stressful day, I would come home and vacuum my room, and then I would wipe down my I would wipe down my desk. I would reorganize my shelf. I would do all these little things. In which I had to be focused and mindful and present, and each time I did those things, I felt like later on I felt, you know, I was sweeping, you know, sweeping the floors of the temple. I was getting things into a certain alignment, you know. I was because your 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 room, your living space, you know, starting with your bedroom and then going into your house and then your car and then your office and this that and the other. All of those things are. 
external representations of your either your internal chaos or your internal peace and you know uh, they can be they can be um like clues to the state of being that we're in it's like well i'm cutting corners in this area so you know i'm really not feeling you know i'm really not feeling good right now i need to take a nap or i need to listen to some soft music i feel overwhelmed and then it's like you know what now that i did that and i have the energy i'm going to go do something so simple and mundane yet it's it brings so much spiritual satisfaction you know doing these mundane things that's also not to ramble on too long here but that's also something that i read um in it's a book called being taoist i believe and these <laughs> i know simple simple phrase um it talks about these manuscripts that were translated from thousands of years ago of um taoist sages who would live their lives in the balance that we're talking about you know the yin and the yang you know about you know the chaos and the order they'd live right in the center of it and one of the principles in their taoist philosophy was doing the dishes uh cleaning the clothes cleaning the house doing all of these simple mundane tasks and when they're done with a certain mindfulness um there's really a, a a deep deep well of satisfaction there that at least that's been my experience with it well that's a really amazing twist on traditional housework and it's a nice reminder for me chop wood carry water mm-hmm. most spiritual <laughs> thing that you can do most spiritual thing you can right do. i <laughs> when i woke up morning and I, I went out into the kitchen and I was looking around and I'm like, "Uh, I've got to clean the house today." And I thought, "You know, there should be better perks with this rising up to the fifth dimension thing. <laughs> If we're all ascending, I'm going to get Samantha powers. I'm going to wiggle my nose <laughs> house and two <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Maybe in a couple maybe in a couple more hundred years we'll be there. Maybe in 250 years or something like that we'll be there, but uh unfortunately the gas has still has to go in the car and you know the you know the dishwasher has to you know isn't going to fill itself all these things. You know, these things can hold us back from experiencing spirituality and 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 peace but when we when we embrace them rather than resist them and we find that we have a strength to do all of these things that seem so so demanding from us and it, and and it's been my experience that i actually feel elevated um you know call it a, a raised consciousness or vibration when those things are no longer in the back of my mind and nagging at me you know it's like they're going to be there no matter what i i don't i can't feel like i can't focus on other things if they're there you know so if i just take care of them i feel much 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 lighter but i understand what you're saying it's you know yeah, you're right it's a source of anxiety for me and i got it and it's so dumb it's so it's back ass words you know we should we should go oh, okay well that will release anxiety let's do it right now let's have that attitude but it's just resistance mm. everything is the, the problem is not like while we're evolving when we feel pain it's just the resistance and then when you let go of it you just yeah. so now it's about coming the, out of your pain and that's you know yeah we, that's not easy exactly. to do. But right. Uh, but you know you mentioned it before. I just wanted to touch on it uh briefly that um you know how you said when you leave the house in the morning you're blessing everyone. That was that was actually the inspiration for the title of the book Bless. It um it came from my my uh understanding my light bulb moment that you know if you're out and about throughout your day 
and you're holding on to, you know, let's say, you know, to use an example of what we just talked about, you're holding on to the laundry that has to be done, or you're holding on to the fight that you got into with your significant other that, you know, shouldn't have happened. You know, you're holding on to these things. And when you see other people and you send them your body language, you send them maybe your words, your, ver- you know, your verbal, you know, um, your words, you know, you send them these things, you know, that's, that's essentially cursing them. You know, you're, you're throwing this negativity their way, or at least you're, you know, you're mirroring it. You're, it's, you know, it's being, it's being sent and received by that person because we're all these biological and energetic receivers and transmitters whereas you know if you walk out and your attitude is you know what what problems I have at home are going to stay home and then when I walk back in and I cross that threshold into my home whatever problems I have outside home they're going to stay out there and I'm going to come in and be fully present here it's like you give yourself the opportunity to and curse someone else through you know the negativity that you may be holding on to you have the opportunity to bless them you know when you when you hold these sentiments inside yourself of benevolence positivity inspiration music poetry all these things you hold within your heart when you're out and about in the world you pass those along you hand them to people and I think that that's the the appropriate way to live. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, we're coming up uh, to the bottom of the hour. I can't believe an hour went by. (laughs) Well, great. It's been a great time. Yeah, I want to have you back on the show at some point um, when you're able to make new poems or maybe read more poems from Glass. That would be awesome. I would love so that. Re- so this is a chapbook or it, can people get a get a copy? It's a it's a full or book. how does that work? um it's uh it's it's a it's a small read. It's it's about ninety pages and it has Benny's artwork, it has my poetry in it. Um I'd love to come back and read some more and, and maybe even when um our second book is is uh uh, published. Uh, we're working on book two right now. Oh, I'm so excited! I can't wait. Thank you. Yeah, maybe we. Yeah, maybe we could have him on too. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be that would be a really good time. I will I will talk to him about it. Um, in the meantime, for anyone who's interested, I have a, a preview um, of Bless available uh, at my website, which is masonadamspoetry.com. And 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 maybe you can. Sp- just in case. I'm sorry, what? So people can... Please please spell your uh, website oh, okay. also, and I'll put it on my... Just in case uh, people didn't catch it. Some of my listeners are um, have English as a second language. Oh, okay. So... Okay. I just spell things. So the website so people is Mason, M-A-S-O-N, Adams, A-D-A-M-S, poetry, P-O-E-T-R-Y dot com. And the book is available on Amazon. So thank you, Elena, for having me on. Oh, thank you for being here. I feel blessed just that you listen to my show, first of all, and that, you know, you've heard of me and that you uh, have come into my life in such a fabulous way. I'm I'm happy to have you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, all right. Well, um... I think that's uh, we're gonna wrap it up and I wish you um, well wonderful rest of the week Mason please keep in touch absolutely we have the potential for being friends so I'm, I'm grateful for that and um, right now I am signing off with peace and love and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension and be peace. <laughs> Any last words? Thank, uh, thank you again very much. Um, this has been a, a great experience. I, I know that we'll stay in touch and, and continue to be friends, you know.
it, it was a it was a lovely it was a lovely time talking with you. Um, I got the feeling that we had a lot in common, and um, I think that's pretty rare. So I'm uh, I'm excited to have made a new friend. Thank you. Me, me too. Thank you so much. <clears throat> well, until next time. Yes. Take care. Bye now. It's you. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.